Every professional protagonist or protagonist needs an antagonist, a villain, a foil, a baddie to go and defeat because the villain is wrong, right? But what if the villain is right? Maybe a villain wants something good, like equality, or justice, or just to be flippin' left alone to swim in the sea. Well, here's seven villains who were right, probably. Oh, and um, beware spoilers for the following films. I waited my entire life for this. The world's gonna start over. First on the list, we have Eric Stevens. Now, this cold hearted mercenary was a former Navy SEAL and had scores of confirmed kills whilst serving for the US. Oh, crap, that's the wrong photo. Hang on a minute. <laughs> this is Eric Stevens, also known as Eric Killmonger. Eric comes from Wakanda, the most technologically advanced nation on the planet, but grew up in America. As a child, Eric's father, brother to the former Black Panther and King of Wakanda, planned to smuggle resources out of Wakanda in an attempt to arm black people across the globe that he saw living under oppression and racist regimes. He wanted to overthrow governments and powers in the hopes that under Wakandan rule there would be no more marginalization of people anywhere. Man, keep it light. Eric's dad was killed by his brother when all this came to light, completely unnecessarily by the way, could definitely have disarmed him with a punch, yeah, just saying. And when Eric grew up, he continued his father's cause to see black people able to live free lives. Granted, he went about it by murdering a bunch of people and his plan was less about equality and more about a complete reversal of the oppressive regimes that exist in the world. But at its heart, there's a really good point. Even the guy who hangs out with rhinos is on his side. So, you know. You homo sapiens and your guns. Now from one Eric to another, this Eric was a Holocaust survivor who saw his family and many other Jewish people exterminated by the Nazis. Man, keep it light. And only later did he realise that he could make a fortune doing coin tricks because as a mutant he had the unique ability to control metal objects with his mind. Fast forward to the present day and a new race is being oppressed, but this time not the Jews, it's the mutants. And it's understandable that given his history, Eric, now called Magneto, is not cool with this. He's not cool with this at all. And his plan doesn't even involve murdering. Not really, no. He's going to use a big swirly machine to turn everybody into mutants. That way if everyone is a mutant, no one will have anything against mutants. Now, I'm all in favour of this, as long as I got one of the cool powers like turning into metal or the power of flight or something and not one of the rubbish powers like Long Tongue Boy over here. <sighs> Slight snag though, the swirly machine accidentally turns people into goop. Oh, and Magneto is going ahead with it anyway. Oh, Eric, you were so close to not being a genocidal maniac. Speaking of genocidal maniacs... A battery of VX gas rockets is presently deployed to deliver a highly lethal strike on the population of the San Francisco Bay Area. I will call again at 100 hours to state my demands. Well, not really genocide, but General Hummel from 1996, The Rock, did plan to kill a lot of people in San Francisco with VX poison gas rockets fired from Alcatraz. Why? Well, Hummel is threatening to wipe out the Bay Area unless the government agree to use $100 million that it got from illegal arms sales to pay compensation to the families of Marines that were lost during top secret missions and so never got any payout. These men died for their country and they weren't even given a goddamn military burial. Do you know what? That would be the kind of goal that would get you elected to office, other than, you know, all the state secrets you'd be revealing. So yes, General Hummel has a good point. And turned out the general was bluffing about bombing San Francisco as well. This mission was based on the threat of force. I'm not about to kill 80,000 innocent people. We bluffed. They called it. The mission's over. Whoever said anything about bluffing, General? Sadly, he employed a load of people that weren't aware of the bluff and didn't share Hummel's views about the bluff. You think that would have been point number one in their first get together? But it turns out the real villain here wasn't the general, or the government, or the rockets. It was poor communication with your team. A cautionary tale for managers everywhere. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No. 
Was I rushing or was I dragging? Terence Fletcher from 2014's Whiplash is a music teacher with some unconventional methods. The movie follows young up and drummer Andrew as he attempts to become a successful musician and he knows that being part of Fletcher's band is a great stepping stone to stardom. But his progress, like this straw, is seldom straightforward. Rejection, replacement and reprimands are all part of the package that Fletcher is bent on delivering to our little drummer boy. And in this modern era of participation trophies and gold stars, Fletcher reminds us that life isn't like that. You want to be better? Work for it. You want to be the best? Be prepared to fail. He talks about when jazz legend Charlie Parker was starting out, he had a cymbal thrown at his head for not being completely spot on. Now, I'm not condoning physical violence here, but by making himself the villain, the very obstacle that Andrew needs to overcome, Fletcher forces Andrew to become a better drummer, a more focused worker, and a more confident person than he was before. Now that very much is my tempo. Side note, if you get into a car crash like this, don't go and drum, go to a blooming hospital. I can't believe it. I've got it right here in front of me. He has missed nine days. And from one educator to another. It's hard enough being a dean, you have tight budgets to work with, disgruntled staff to lead, excessive demands on your time, no semblance of a work-life balance, plus you have to try and keep everyone in the building learning. Which is why Edward R. Rooney is on this list. He's just a man with a simple desire. To see those young minds under his supervision get a proper education. But what if one of those young minds is Ferris Bueller, the ungrateful, unruly youth at the centre of this story? who is unnervingly smooth, by the way. See, Ferris has missed nearly two weeks of school already this semester. Now, I don't really know how long a US semester is, but safe to say two weeks off school for no good reason is not okay. Sure, Ferris Bueller has committed theft, fraud, cyber crimes, vandalism, but Ed hasn't given up on him. No, a lesser man might have cut Ferris loose, but not Dean Rooney. He will stop at nothing to, at the very least, teach Ferris that actions have consequences. If anything, the real villains here are his parents. I mean, listen to how they talk about Ferris's sister, Jeannie. She got a speeding ticket, another speeding ticket, and I lost the Vermont deal because of her. I think we should shoot her. Uh, somebody call social services? And to Ed Rooney for upholding the rules of an educational institution and never giving up on a student, we salute you. You don't go in the water at all, do you? some bad hat, Harry. So, Jaws? Now, Jaws the shark from Jaws has Jaws, and he uses his Jaws to jaw things. He Jaws things right up. Right up all in his Jaws. And the good people of Amity Island don't like being Jawsed. They don't like it one bite. I mean, one bit. So the police chief, the scientist, and the cliched sailor man go to stop Jaws from using his Jaws by way of a pointy stick or something. Thing is, Jaws is a great white shark who lives in the sea, and we are literally breaking into his house. So he's perfectly within his rights to defend himself. I think that's how maritime law works. Another thing is that sharks do not have very big brains, unless they're those super enhanced sharks from Deep Blue Sea. But even then, they can seldom complete a wordle in under five guesses. So I think we're perhaps projecting some of our own aggression onto the less intelligent life form, don't you think? Plus, number of deaths recorded from great white shark attacks worldwide ever, 52. Number of deaths from cars in the US in one year alone, over 40,000. They should make a scary film about that. Call it Cars. What do you mean there's already a film called Cars? How many deaths are there? None. A four-year-old child is on the street. It's seven, six hours and counting. And the prospects for where she might be are beginning to look grim, you understand? Finally, we have Morgan Freeman's Captain Jack Doyle from Gone Baby Gone, a Boston policeman who, along with private investigators played by Casey Affleck and Michelle Monaghan, are to a greater or lesser extent investigating the disappearance of young Amanda McCready, the daughter of drug addicts and criminals who has been kidnapped. Initially, it looked like the local drug lord took Amanda because her parents stole a load of his money. But as the plot unfolds, it turns out that the kidnapper was none other than Captain Jack Doyle himself. His reason being, to give Amanda a better life away from the drugs and the crime. Now, Casey Affleck's character reasonably puts forward that there are systems in place, social services and the such, that should help Amanda out. But Doyle retorts that he's seen too many people fall through the cracks in the system to let it happen again. And whilst of course he has a point that no child should live in an abusive environment, Perhaps kidnapping wasn't the way to go? Well, whatever you think about Jack Doyle, the film ends with Casey Affleck calling the police, Morgan Freeman is arrested, and the girl is returned to her crack den. 
Well, those are seven baddies who had a point, probably. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree with these supposedly evil people slash sharks? Can you think of any villains you agree with? Um, if so, leave a comment below and feel free to like and share the video. Until next time, bye!